No, I'm Doris and I'm here to share with you about the today's market update. Recently, Silicon Valley Bank got bankrupted and we're going to talk about its bankruptcy valuation for d- product maturity mismatch, large allocation of NPS, strong interest rate hike, cycle victim. As the Fed begins an aggressive rate hike cycle to fight inflation in 40 years, risks at U.S. financial institutions are exposed and panic hangs over Wall Street, and no one wants to be the next to Lehman. On March 11th, Beijing time, California regulators announced that Silicon Valley Bank, SVB, was taken over by Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation due to insufficient liquidity and uh, insolvency, and began to arrange the follow-up deposit repayment plan. The news quickly made headlines in the major media. The front page of the U.S. media reported with the, with the headline, Silicon Valley failed out in a shocking 48 hours, raising fears of a banking collapse. What is the hidden prime culprit behind the taking over of the Silicon Valley Bank? Will this risk to sp- continue to spread further? What are some implications? Silicon Valley Bank shares have plummeted. It suffered a $1.8 billion loss by selling at its all at its $21 billion of marketable securities and sought to raise $2.25 billion through the sale of common and preferred shares. After the news, Silicon Valley Bank Bank's share plunged 60%, the biggest drop since 1998, wiping $9.6 billion off its market value and triggering a, war, a widespread sell-off in U.S. bank stocks and even JP Morgan Chase, with a market capitalization of nearly $400 billion, down more than 5% in a single day. It can be seen that in the face of the sudden and unpredictable liquidity crisis, the markets concerned about commercial banks are indiscriminate, and the giants are no exception. Local time, 10 days. Silicon Valley Bank pre-market trading fell another 68%. SVB share were suspended at 8.35 a.m. Eastern Time, the second regional U.S. banking crisis this week, according to a Nasdaq tracking website. The announcement after Surrogate Bank, one of the U.S. crypto banking giants, announced it will close its operation and clear, prompting a sell-off in bank shares and fears that that more institutions could fail. U.S. Treasury Secretary Jenny Yellen expressed concern about the financial situation of some banks at a hearing on Monday. Speaking of Silicon Valley banks, the recent developments are related to a few banks that I'm watching closely. This is a concern when banks suffer financial losses. Ms. Yellen said, The banking system remains resilient and the regulators have expected tools to deal with such incidents. What does the storm start from? Start with the business area of a Silicon Valley Bank. Silicon Valley Bank is the 16th largest bank in the United States, focusing on technology investments. Compared with traditional commercial banks, Silicon Valley banks, which serve the financial needs of high-tech enterprises and unprofitable startups, have derived their own private banking, equity investment, and investment banking businesses, and their ROE return on equity level has long been higher than that of traditional commercial banks. The outbreak in 2020, from Trump to Biden, from the federal government to the state government, started an unprecedented release between 2020 and 2021. Under the huge quantitative easing, quality banks in Silicon Valley were widely praised and received a lot of loans at zero cost. Industrial securities and analysts who did not want to be named in an interview with National Business Daily Reporter, which has said, In the second half of 2020, the Federal Reserve is still conducting quantitative easing, and the market liquidity is very loose. Under the background of extremely low financing costs, some technology banks especially startups, set, on, set off an IPO financing boom and received a huge financing support. During this period, Silicon Valley banks made it more than $100 billion in loans to these tech companies. Silicon Valley banks' assets expanded rapidly, from more than $70 billion to about $200 billion. In the year and a half from June 2020 to December 2021, SVB deposits rose from $76 billion to more than $190 billion. Generally speaking, the interest margin between deposits and loans was the ma- main profit source of commercial banks. But at that time, the benchmark interest rate of the Federal Reserve was only 0 to 0.25%, and the financing cost was very low. 
So the bank profits were very limited in order to generate higher profits. Silicon Valley Bank chose to use some of their interest-free liability to buy traditionally less risky treasury and mortgage-backed securities, MBS, at one point allocating more than 50% of their assets there. In addition, as the mem- members of the Federal Reserve System, the Federal Reserve requires reserves to hold a percentage of its demand deposits, which is the reason why Silicon Valley Bank chose to buy large amounts of U.S. Treasury bonds and MBS with their interest-free liabilities. Short-term mismatch out of use More than a half of Silicon Valley Bank's latest annual report show its portfolio in as one-year to, to five-year risk. During the outbreak of the Fed, the PE venture capital market also rapidly expansion, bring a lot of low interest rates deposits in Silicon Valley. These Silicon Valley bank companies borrow money from financial institutions to the banks in Silicon Valley. Silicon Valley Bank got a lot of deposits while facing the enterprise credit demand de- decline in Silicon Valley. In the Fed zero interest rate period, bought a lot of 1% interest rate of treasuries and the mortgage-backed securities. The aforementation of aforementioned industrial securities analysts told reporters. MBS is the earliest asset securized variety, first produced in the U.S. in the 1960s. It is mainly an asset security securized by commodity issued by American housing banks and the savings institutions using the housing mortgage loans, and the securities are guaranteed by the government agencies or financial institutions with government background which has a strong f- public financial policy color. A serious maturity mismatch was the trigger for the crisis at the Silicon Valley banks. Silicon Valley Bank made a long-term and short-term mismatch in this early stage of the interest rate hike, which is a prelude to its rollover. The business model of Silicon Valley Bank is different from in traditional banks, focusing on serving the financial needs of startups. In this process, a large number of low-cost demand deposits are deposited, resulting in an increase in the investment allocation of bonds as an asset end, laying hidden dangers for the de- liquidity crisis caused by a subsequent high interest rate environment. The analyst said in 2022, the Federal Reserve started to raise interest rates sharply, pulling the interest rate to about 4.5% within a year. The market is expected to continue until the end of 2023. The interest rate level may be close to 6%, which makes the bank bond yield rose to 5% to 7%, resulting in the Silicon Valley Bank bought 1% bonds facing a huge loss. As long as Silicon Valley Bank stretch, there is no loss on the books. However, the decline of the Nasdaq 2022 leads to the continuous decline in the bond funds of book funds of Silicon Valley companies and the surge in interest rates of the Federal Reserve. Moreover, a large number of Silicon Valley companies chose to withdraw money from Silicon Valley banks to pay off debts, leading to the plight of Silicon Valley banks having no money to repay to customers, the analyst said. In the process of the Federal Reserve entering rate hike cycle in 2022, the liquidity feast of PE versus virtual capital market ended. Venture capital market ended, and the Silicon Valley bank faced a huge pressure. The total assets in 2022 increased only by $300 million compared with the beginning of the year, but the cost of interest rate bearing deposits rose sharply from 3.13% in 2021 to 1.13% in 2022. It has not yet reached the crisis level of 2008. Normally, assets such as U.S. debt and MBS will not lose money at the principal level unless the global financial crisis occurs. And the Fed's aggressive interest rate hike only leads to a drop in trading prices in the terms. In the process, in terms of the balance sheet, the returns on Treasury bonds and the MBS are 1.49% and 1.91%, minus about 0.25% of costs, fully prof- profitable. But since 2022, everything has changed. After the Fed's aggressive rate hike cycle, the drop in Treasury prices in the opposite direction and the drop in the demand for tech companies in Silicon Valley. The bond market slumped a huge impact on Silicon Valley banks. Silicon Valley banks, when deposits grew sharply in the past few years, used the money to, that they absorbed it to allocate a large number of long-term hold to maturity assets and available for sale assets. About these two assets, financial assets are available for sale 
In the accounting treatment of enterprises referred to the trading of financial assets and other creditors' rights, securities, and equity securities other than the held to maturity investment. The main existing value is interest rate, dividend, or market price appreciation. Hold to maturity financial assets, HTM, means non derivative financial assets with a fixed maturity date, a fixed or definable recovery amount, and the enterprise has a clear intention and ability to hold to maturity. To make matters worse, Silicon Valley banks have allocated much more hold to maturity assets than they are available for sale. This is not to increase the maturity mismatch, but also it fa faces a huge interest rate risk. This makes the Silicon Valley Bank face a double pressure in the background of interest rate increase. Silicon Valley ba Bank can, can only pay more than high interest costs to sta stabilize the debt, but this will lead to the narrowing of interest rate margins and squeeze the income and profit margins. On the contrary, the company can, also, can only be forced to sell assets at a discount, equivalent to ordinary depositors' early withdrawal certificate of deposits, the impact of the company. At maturities, these assets will not lose a principal level, but once sold in the bond market, the paper loss can become a real loss. Will a Silicon Valley bank takeover have a chain effect? Will more and more American banks encounter a similar crisis in the future? The market does not seem to be too worried yet. More banks, most banks will be fine, say analysts at CFRA Research, but some specialized banks and major banks serving high net worth individuals may have some concerns but at least it's not enough yet to the level of 2008 financial crisis. From a leverage and liquidity perspective, the current overall situation may not be as tight as the market concerns. The aforementioned industrial securities analysts sold their reporters. Wilson Securities analysts believe at that the Silicon Valley banking problem is not likely to turn into a broader crisis event, mainly because the company's problems are relatively independent and there's almost no cross-risk with other financial institutions. For China's banks, there's no direct impact. But the, from the perspective of market analysis, the bankruptcy event of Silicon Valley Bank is a combination of multiple special character factors, which cannot be replicated and does not seem to be transmitted to other banks, especially the Chinese banking system. Be aware of the rising risk of the single customer structure. At the present, the problem of a Silicon Valley Bank is that it absorbed a large amount, large number of low-cost deposits during the period of loose liquidity and allocated long-term bond assets, resulting in a significant increase in potential interest rate risk. The Federal Reserve's interest rate hike became a sister faction. Exposing the problem, Silicon Valley Bank's main customers are Silicon Valley companies, which are not covered by personal debt depo deposit insurance and their inability to withdraw money quickly triggered a panic and the stampede runs, triggering a plunge in the company's share price. In Austria Securities, the above-mentioned analyst told reporters. The target customer group of Silicon Valley Bank is different from other commercial banks, which mainly serve PE and uh, venture capital high-tech enterprises, and high net worth in individuals such as employees of these co enterprises. On the other hand, the customer structure is relatively simple. This particular amplifies particularity amplifies its liquidity risk. Since the bank does not set aside enough cash to counter customer withdrawal, the company is prone to collapse if its uh, major co customers withdraw cash. It is worth noting that Silicon Valley banks are not as diversified as large banks, such as JP Morgan Chase, holding a large number of treasury bonds and BDS, as the federal hack of exposed liquidity risk, which is the main reason for the crisis. It can be seen that due to the particularity of the customer group structure of the Silicon Valley banks, the main business is characterized by the characteristics of high growth and high profit, but also accompanied by hidden concerns of reducing the risk tolerance with a single business structure. Silicon Valley banks' two special customer <coughs> base also brings another bite. The tech industry, especially the tech companies that have not yet made profits, in the environment of substantial interest rate increase, it almost needs no loans. Even needs to restore the stock market financing is difficult. The cash flow requirements are extremely high. Industry insiders believe that 
A small and medium-sized banks should pay special attention to balance the characteristic operation and diversify, diversified operation, building a firm business step, and enhance the ability to resist risk. At the same time, asset allocation focuses on the balance of liquidity and income level, avoids too many assets hold to healthy maturity, and has to passively cut meat in the face of long run store. In other words, the eggs cannot be put in the same basket, either in the business structure or in the asset allocation. A, sta a stable and healthy capital structure of banks is more conducive to improving profitability, solvency, and financing efficiency of fi commercial banks. With the rise of internet finance, the traditional deposit and loan business model of commercial banks rely on interest rate spreads has, has been greatly impacted. In order to stabilize income and increase income, diversified the operation has become an inevitable choice of commercial banks, which also means that a higher requirement of, for risk control and the resource input. That's all I have for today. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to subscribe and like. See you next episode.